is Friday, Friday in the forest. Yeah. Forest yeah. on a Friday, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, forest friends. For this week's edition of Forest Friday, we are at Pink Beds Loop Trail. And I am very excited to present our guest, Mark Williams, who is an ethnobotanist and is the executive director of Plants and Healers International. Howdy. So I'm really excited to be here with the Dogwood Alliance, doing one of my favorite things, walking in the woods, looking at nature, teaching people about the things that we find. And really the tagline for Plants and Healers International is advancing human culture in harmony with the natural world. And so that's basically what we're doing today is teaching these fine folks about some of our plant friends out here at Pink Beds. And that's what I do in various other parts of the country and lots of different venues in other countries and also online through a uh, online botany class at botanyeveryday.com as well. So this is um, in the family of the bolites, sometimes given its own family. It's called the painted bolete. It's uh, antimicrobial property. So this would be a classic mm. thing. You'd make a tea or a tincture or cold or flu or other kinds of sickness. Multiple black and blue swallowtail butterflies. And one of them feeds on a poisonous plant and thereby becomes poisonous itself. Mm. And so the predators will avoid it. And then these other ones have tagged along on the back of them oh, by yeah. evolving to have the same color, even though they're not poisonous. They look so similar. And this is one of the favorite indigenous plants of the Cherokee mm -hmm. for uh, early spring greens. It's called uh, in Cherokee Sochan or Sochani. And then uh, an English name is the green headed coneflower or green eyed Susan because it has a green center there. It's not easy, but I think that it's really helpful when we get these different people at the table, whether it's you know the uh, conservation groups, the academicians, the um, you know government employees, the folks that are making their living off of the, the resources that the forest represents, um, students, you know, like we really need to kind of look at that in a holistic way. You know? the first one we've seen in this whole walk yeah. that we've done you know so that's something that obviously um, is going to need a lot more of a kind of conservation ethic than potentially like some of these common ferns you know or some of the blueberries we've been walking through so kind of like making that relative value yeah and then certainly providing habitat for other organisms, you know, biodiversity support kind of thing. And that's the idea too that I really try to put out there to people is this idea of stacking functions which mm -hmm. comes from permaculture. And so this is a plant that is just beautiful, you know, um, aesthetically. It's nice to look at, but then it also has some potential to be helpful mm -hmm. for colds and flus for people, but then it also has the potential to be helpful for pollinators. So in a permacultural system, you're always trying to find at least three applications for any element within the system. It's Friday, Friday in the forest, yeah. forest on a Friday. 